This is where you do a show, Rich. <laughs> hey, Rich, how's it going? It's great. So this is uh, SSU's college football review. I'm Rich Michelson. Um, I help out around the website. Abe and uh, Matt here. How you doing, Abe? Uh, no, no, that's this this way. This way. There we go. There's that's Abe. That's Matt. Matt, how you doing? <laughs> Good. How's it going? Good. Abe, how are you doing? Doing well. This is obviously our oh. first our first show of the season. First show of the season. <laughs> first show for me in a while. Anyway, I had a great Saturday sitting on an airplane watching college football. How'd you guys do? Make out? Wow, I wish I was doing that. That that would have been awesome. Uh, I was make any flight awesome. Yeah, and being able to watch football on on an airplane is amazing. Uh, I was actually at the University of Washington uh, uh, game versus Fresno State and had a fun All right. game. Cool, cool. How about you, Matt? Uh, I want to offer Abe my condolences for him being at the uh, Husky game. Uh, that just sounds terrible. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to go through that. <laughs> <laughs> for those that know, don't know, um, Matt uh, does help us out with uh, the Husky review, though he might not be the most loyal uh, follower. But we'll uh, we'll forgive him just this once. So let's get into it. Huskies versus Fresno State. Uh, this is the third game the Huskies played uh, against basically, mm, let's say, below par competition. Matt, what did you think? Well, I wasn't too surprised at the outcome. Let me tell you that. Uh, it, it surprised absolutely no one. Um, as usual, you know, Dig Browning impresses me every time he goes out there. He's learning more and more every week. Uh, you know, Miles Gaskin came out of nowhere in my opinion what a year and a half ago or so and and continues to carry the ball against pretty much everyone's expectation and uh you know they just kind of wonder how how he continues to do it and uh of course Dante Pettis is you know consistently listed in the top five wide receivers in 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 college football and he is definitely deserving of that honor uh it was a it was just it was the it was the husky show the whole game from start to finish uh they hit the gas early and they uh they they uh they proved who they were and uh they looked very impressive hey what are your thoughts on uh since you were there in person our our, our witness or reporter what's what, what what were your impressions what did you think rich these are the kind of games that you and i used to watch when we were kids back in the 90s these were the game this was the type of game where we went up against a weaker and inferior opponent, an opponent who had been utterly demolished by the University of Alabama, Crimson Tide, and we stuck it to them every bit as much, if not more so, than Alabama did. And you know, all 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 the uh, props in the world go to those Bulldogs at Fresno State. It just was a clinic in talent level like our talent levels up here their talent level way down there and that's where this that's where the huskies need to be that's where they have been in the past and it's great to see chris peterson bring that back to us as matt mentioned jake browning on fire for td passes i want to also mention that our depth looked really good too take a look at one kj carter samuels the backup quarterback went five five uh, had had a touchdown, or I'm sorry, didn't have a touchdown, but he led the team out, down the field. Uh, everybody looked good. It all looked good, and that's the way it's supposed to be so we can make our march once again to those college football playoffs. Well, and, and one one other note on on uh, Jake Browning. I mean, you know, not just the four touchdowns. He was 19 of 22 for 255 yards. He was accurate. He was on target. He was He was on. He's he's showing uh, to be every bit as good a quarterback as I ever dreamed he would be, and uh, I, I see him as a very high NFL draft pick when it comes time. Boy, I am the biggest Husky hack here, um, and I know you're the Oregon Duck fan, and I think we're going to have to disagree a little bit on his NFL future. Um, I hope you're right and I'm wrong about that, but I think definitely at the college level he is going to be a legend if he's not already. I I mean, he brings it every game. He's super efficient. 
And you know what I love? What do I love as a Husky fan? Uh, even though I'm not up in the Pacific Northwest, but um, I love having something to have a chip on my shoulder about. In this preseason, they listed the top 10 quarterbacks. ESPN listed the top 10 college quarterbacks. Jake Browning didn't even get a sniff, not even an honorable mention, not even a, oh, well, he had shoulder surgery. We're not sure how he's going to break down. It was all Sam, 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 I am, Sam Darnold down at USC. Well, okay. well and, Who are the, and other the golden boy from uh, from UCLA as well, I'm yeah. sure, right? Josh Rosen. Are you kidding me? Josh uh, Rosen? Yep. No. M- Mr. He yep. of the interceptions against Memphis, the Memphis Tigers this season. Yep. Weekend? Oh now, my gosh! Sam Darnold deserves credit. He is a, an amazing talent, uh, but Jake Browning, in my picture, in my imagination, is is is, is a big step up who, from Rose. He's definitely these, number two. Who are these ten? I mean, Darnold. Yeah, you're right. I'll give that to you. I'll also give you Jackson uh, out of uh, uh, Louisville. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, are there really eight other guys better than Jake Browning at the college level? Uh, the answer is no. The correct answer is no. Not even close. Um, but I like ha- being able to have that. I think the Huskies have that. I think Browning has that. I think this offense has that. Um, what I liked seeing, because I wasn't able to watch uh, very much of the game at all, was that it was 48-7 to after the first possession of the second quarter. That's your foot on the throat. That's taking an inferior team out to the woodshed and then Peterson putting in his second string and his third string and being a nice polite coach and just running the ball and keeping the playbook really simple with that backup quarterback. I love that he put in the backup quarterback. He didn't have Browning up there, you know, putting up another hundred yards, blowing out his ACL, ruining the season, all those fun things that other college coaches do. Yeah, I agree with you. Back in the day, the uh, University of Houston would lead in uh, Andre Ware and David Klingler to pile up a uh, you know, PlayStation numbers. And that that's always bothered me. Um, I, I prefer, if you're up by 30, 40, you know, and there's 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, come on, put in your subs. I mean, uh, let some of the younger, first of all, it helps you to have the younger guys come in and get game time experience. And secondly, mm-hmm. uh, what's what's the point in running up the score? I, I, I don't care about, the end of the season, they don't look at, they don't look at like how many, you know, uh, touchdowns you scored or this that, and the other thing. They look at how good your team was in the best games, along with your total record. Yeah, they're not going to go to the the game footage of of Fresno State versus the Huskies no, when not. they're looking yeah. at at the Huskies for potential college football playoffs. You know, they're gonna they're gonna look at you know the games against some real Pac-12 opponents and and see how you how you reacted to the adversity there. They they don't care about you know, the, the early scrub games. They don't right. care that you threw so many points up against Mizzou or whatever, you know, or not Mizzou. Montana. So I have a question for you guys. Mm. Who other than Gaskin can run the ball for the Huskies? Because so far this season, I'm not impressed. Not impressed with the running game. It is a little bit of a concern heading into Pac-12 play. Um, I, the last couple of seasons, I've been used to Gaskin and the rest of the crew really being able to run the ball down the other people's throats. This was a uh, offensive line that's supposed to be able to go out and destroy defensive lines uh, throughout the Pac-12. And I'll be honest, guys, I'm not sure that they're up for that, given this mediocre rushing performance against Fresno State. 92 yards, really? 92 yards. I'll go ahead and field that one. Uh, that might be more up my alley. Uh, Levon Coleman is the backup running back. He didn't get a whole lot of looks. And when you see 92 yards, Rich, keep in mind that they had already put in a freshman by the name of Savon uh, Ahmed. And they're trying to see what he can do. And they didn't really care if they're going to get a breakaway for 80 yards. They just want to see, how do you match up freshmen against, you know, uh, D1 level opponents? Well, are you going to get anything? 10, 10 attempts, 28 yards. No, that's not good, Rich. I agree with you. That's not, that's not great, but they were even putting in backup offensive linemen. Don't get too crazy on this one, okay? 
All this, right. this is All right. this is not a quality opponent. I understand that, but this uh, uh, expecting anything out of a freshman running back, it's very difficult to expect great results when you're thrown in uh, basically to the wolves, or in this case, the bulldogs. All right, so I'm going to change the subject. Speaking about uh, the wolves or the bulldogs or taking people to the woodshed, I'm not sure which metaphor or idiom I'm using here, but um, I'm going to bring up someone from the days of yore, a Pac-12 legend, a Husky legend, someone who is in whatever the Huskies have. The Husky Hall of Fame? Sure, we'll go with that. Bino Bryant. Bino Bryant. Yes. Who... Before this year, I would have said was the greatest kick returner in Husky history. Hands down, put put him on a field, on a punt, or a kick, and that's the guy I want. And we've got a guy that have gone and taken Bean O'Brien and his legend out to the woodshed, not just like beat him up, but like slaughtered him, hung him, drawn him, quartered him, burned him to a crisp. What the heck is going on with Dante Pettis? I don't know, but I, I'm looking at our technical director behind this very camera, throwing his hands up in disgust when you're mentioning a guy that he's never heard of from an era so far gone in Bean O'Brien. I got it. But okay, it, well, hold just, on, hold on. It, just just, it just amused the heck out of me that the technical director is freaking out because it, we're going, you went slightly off script, but I love it, Rich. I love that you brought up the past. Uh, Bean O'Brien was amazing. He was a great kick returner, punt returner, and he changed the course of games. Dante Pettis has just tied Antonio Perkins and Wes Welker. Dante Pettis is in position to break the all-time NCAA record for most punt returns for touchdowns, and I would love to see that. And I would say if you're looking at an NFL prospect right now, I would go in on Donny Pettis if I were any NFL team in this great land of ours, the USA. <laughs> Patriotism. Yes. Uh, I have to agree. He's he's absolutely unquestioned. He's the best draft prospect on this team. He's he's um, amazing, and he's going to break the record, in my opinion. I, I, I see it happening. It's going to happen. And I'm rooting for him. He, he uh, He's an amazing talent. He's fun to watch. He... He's gonna do well at the next the next level, and uh, everyone knows it. He's got the breeding, uh, you know, with his his older brother who played for Chris over at uh, Boise State, and uh, you know he's he is just, he's explosive. He's big and can 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 shrug off guys. Uh, you know, I, I I love every every aspect of his play. I, Matt, I Matt, can't say that enough. Inside insider comment there. Who is his older brother, by the way? Austin. Austin Pettis of your St. Louis Rams. Oh, <laughs> wait. Sorry. No. No. Carson wait, wait. Rams. Aren't the, Carson they the Carson Rams. Of the Carson. The greater Rams. Louis Los Angeles of Anaheim the, and the Anaheim Rams Carolina. of Carson City. Yes. <laughs> um, but no, Austin NFL Pettis was a great team player that has to kowtow to the schedule of an MLS team. <laughs> No, that's you the know, Chargers. Serious, serious. That's the Chargers. Uh, by oh, the way. that's the Chargers. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah. The Rams play in the Coliseum. Oh, the Rams. I, We're the absolute... Chargers, the Rams. I'm, I am I just can't handle there being teams in L.A. This is really confusing to me as an NFL fan. As a, I mean, that was something that happened, like, like teams in L.A. was something that happened, like, before I was a teenager. So, like, uh, this is just strange and odd. <laughs> anyway. Um, moving on. Oh, Donde Pettis. So he's just, he's, I don't know what he's taken. He's, he's awesome. But I do have a question for you guys. NFL teams take lots of wide receivers. Very rarely do they seem to ever look at their kick return skills, which is baffling to me since most rookie wide receivers, not a whole lot of impact. It's usually that second and third year when a receiver can really break out and become something. But Lots of rookie kick returners have immediate impact, game-breaking impact, season-changing impact for NFL teams. Why don't more NFL teams look at kick return ability? Uh, the kick returns are no longer important in an era where kickers kick the ball through the end zone. 
I that's think punt that's returns, fairly true. I yeah, mean, I mean, you know, you see occasionally in the NFL, you'll see kickers kick it through the uprights from from the play during on the on the kickoff. Uh, mm-hmm. They'll you know they'll kick the, the seventy yard field goal or whatever. Uh, it, it's it's just not a big part of the game at the NFL level. It's not big enough. The, the rosters are, are tight enough that it's not as a high a priority. Um, you have to have you have be. to have a multi layer player like uh, Tyler Lockett. Yeah, so you better be a darn good receiver in addition to being a kick returner, punt returner. Yeah. Well, I I just look at teams. Just take a first, just quickly. I know we've gone on a tangent, but just to finish this up, uh, lots of teams throw someone out there to catch the ball, wave their hand, do a fair catch, move on, and take over the the drive on the offense. Like the Seahawks, the last uh, three seasons when they haven't had Tyler Lockett healthy or someone of his ilk. Uh, uh, you know, a bit it, out there. All right. Um, so Dante Pettis, though, he's the real deal. He seems to be uh, a genuine NFL prospect out of the wide receiver position and kick returning position. So that's great. Moving on for the Husky schedule, the Colorado Buffaloes, the team we had to face uh, in the Pac-12 championship. Um, they're coming up. What do we know? Like, what what do you guys think? think about these buffaloes what do you think about the huskies matching up with them i i'll be honest i just don't know what to what to make of anybody's schedule so far and that's what colorado loves colorado loves that people don't think about them and they love that they uh, people underestimate them that's how they got to the pac-12 uh championship team last year that's how they won the pac-12 self mike mcintyre turns teams around he turned around, what was it, uh, San Jose State, and he's turned around Colorado, obviously. And he's got a quarterback who uh, took a back seat last year. Um, Steven Montez is his name, and he uh, has been hitting with he's been hitting his receivers with sixty eight percent efficiency, and he's been doing everything to lead that offense down the field and score and score often they have. They are 3-0. This is the toughest game so far on the schedule, and it might be the toughest game that they'll play this entire season. Well, wow. At least, regu- at least regular season. Wow. You think going to Colorado the first week of the uh, regular season mm-hmm. uh, in Pac-12 plays the Huskies' toughest game? Yes. All right. You heard it here first. Um, I... Abe, are, uh, do you do you have uh, do you do you have an article um, on our website that you're going to be uh, uh, breaking down the schedule for us? Something you know on SSU.com? Yeah, yeah, or? definitely. I'd like every. I invite everybody to check out our website, SeattleSportsUnion.com. Our site's going to have a preview of that very game that'll be up Thursday. All right, Matt. What do you think? What do you think about the Buffs? And what I'm do you still. Think about- comment there on the uh, schedule yeah i'm still still trying to process this uh toughest team on the schedule against you, the unranked colorado buffaloes you're not buying I'm it the, i'm looking at the schedule here and i'm seeing i don't know utah wazoo uh, uh, uh an organ that's turned things around um you know ucla with the golden boy uh, Stanford at Stanford, you know, I mean, that's always tough, but, but Hey, no, it's the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, I, I do agree, uh, on his statement that they, they do count on people not really looking at that game as a big deal and, and kind of looking past them. And that's when, that's when it's a trap game. It's a, it's a, it's a classic trap game and they love doing that. They did it to Oregon last year and, uh, it, it was, it was just amazing what they did. Uh, but to be to be fair, uh, there is one thing that does need to be considered. This, there's their main strength last year, in my opinion, was the defense. Uh, they had their defense coordinator stolen from them this last off season. Uh, he's now at Oregon, and uh, so you know, there's a question of how 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 well they can game plan on defense against some real competition. I mean, we'll see, obviously, uh, but. I'm not sure that they're going to be the hardest team that you double play uh, on, on the entire season, regular season. Um, I, I don't know if I can agree to that. Oh boy. Philip Lindsay ran for 126 yards last week. I mean, this is a guy that's up there with the Royce Freemans of the world. This is a guy up there with the Miles Gaskins, and you're, you're acting like this isn't going to be a problem? You think? No, it'll be, it'll be a game, but I don't think it's going to be the toughest game you're going to play this season. 
does, really does the don't. defensive coordinator make that big of a difference? Does the talent account for something? Well, we can. We've had that discussion regarding uh, a, a pro level team that's based in the Seattle area on offense, but uh, uh, you know it can make a difference. It really can. Uh, like I said, you know, with, there's we haven't they haven't really played anyone important yet to, to to see to really test them defensively. So we'll you know we'll we'll see. I, it's kind of a, it's a big question mark. It's a very big question mark. It's a game I've been looking forward to on the calendar, and uh, you know we'll see. Wow, I really feel like you're undervaluing the Colorado Buffaloes here. Am I the only one that that thinks that they're a threat? It's Colorado. Come on, man. It's a mile high. <laughs> they're a mile high up in the air. I'm just messing. Uh, I I just I I don't know yet who they are this year, and it so it's a it's a big question mark to me. Um, but you look, their, uh, you look at the Buffalo schedule. You, heck, you look at anyone that's three and zero in the Pac-12 right now. And and who they've played and what they've done means nothing. None of the teams are of good enough quality to really tell you anything. I don't know um, about that, Rich. I mean, USC played Texas and Oregon played Nebraska. They're both well. USC nice. also and, played Stanford and beat and crushed Stanford. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah, I mean, Stanford doesn't look like they're the Stanford they have been the last. I don't know, seven eight years since. Yeah, Jim yeah, Park. but I mean, still, they're, they're still a quality team and. UW of those of those three teams, U, USC, Oregon, and themselves is the only one that's played Patsies for all three games. And that's why I'm concerned about Colorado. Colorado is not a Patsy. I I don't care if they've taken a step back. I don't care if they've lost their defense coordinator. This is still a team that we're going to their home stadium in Boulder, and we're going to have to try to do something against against McIntyre. McIntyre's a good coach. It is a trap game, and it and it will be interesting to see. But I I'm not as worried as you are, I guess. I I, I gotta I gotta say that usually the team that has the best player or players wins the game, and Thanks, the have two best players. They have Jake Browning, and they have Dante Pettis. I, I'm I'm gonna go John Madden and say that the team that has the most points on the board at the end is will win the game. <laughs> Wow. Uh, insightful great, great, great commentary there, uh, Matt. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. And are you going to do the telestrator with the turkey the turkey wings as well? The turkey no, wings? but I, I am going to create my own team that's that's the uh, all-Matt team, and it'll have 45 offensive linemen right off the end of the, uh, the field. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, that's that's fun and games. Do you have do you have any other commentary, Matt or Abe, on the University of Washington Huskies before we th- turn things over to the other side of the state? No, it's going to be an evening game. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be really tough, and I'm hoping hoping the boys in purple and purple and gold can pull it out. It's definitely going to be a, a, a game to watch. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I had it circled on my calendar for the last couple of months, and uh, you know we'll 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 see. But I, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the purple the purple wearing team will will win. Um, yep, that one is a national broadcast. That's on FS1 at uh, at what seven o'clock uh, Pacific time. So uh, all eyes should be on that. Um, and this is a good segue. Just a reminder, we are the Seattle Sports Union. Our website, seattlesportsunion.com. You can also follow us on Twitter. Um, and uh, take a look. We, we cover everything that has to do with Seattle sports of any significance as well as insignificance. So um, moving things along to the red side of the state, the east side of the state, where Washington State uh, you know, calls home. They... Um, were in conference play uh, this this weekend. They were playing against Oregon State, and uh, from the look of things, you know they uh, they took them kind of out to the woodshed there. Um, Abe, what are your thoughts on Washington State and what they did uh, this weekend? Boy, boy, I'm trying. I'm I'm done trying to figure out why they do the things they do and how they do the things they do. I mean, they they're three and zero. I forgot to mention that earlier. They're the other three and zero team. Uh, and they they beat, beat uh, Boise State in overtime, uh, but they do it in the weirdest, oddest manner as possible. They have running backs that average about seven yards a run, and they choose not to use them. Who cares? They got quarterback controversy. Who cares? 
But there what controversy? I, I, I still don't get this. You're trying to gin up some controversy. There's no controversy. Luke Falk is one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. I'm not trying to bring up any controversy. Matt, did you see the game last week? Did you see how they took Luke Falk out of the game in overtime? They let some scrub that nobody's ever heard of go and win the game for him. Yeah. I, I actually think it's smart, quite frankly, to pull a player that isn't performing, get him out of there, get someone else in, especially if you've seen the two players in practice and you know what they're capable of. I have no problem with that. Uh, you know, you might have heard of a guy that got pulled a lot. His name was Joe Montana. Oh, my God. Go on. Just saying. Just... <laughs> Matt, what do you think? No, tell us about the Montana story, Rich. You're going to bring oh, it up? He, he, he got pulled all the time uh, by, by Bill Walsh because they needed to win games. And so Walsh would pull him out. Steve Young would come in. And then the next week, Joe Montana would start again. And was there a controversy? Yes. Only the fans' minds. Yes, there was. <laughs> that was. That was because Montana was making the money, the real money. Yeah, that's probably true. That's why he was starting. And that's why they then yeah. traded him and got rid of him. Yeah. Because they moved on to the younger, younger, and younger. That was the you're... end. That was the very, very end of Joe Montana's. And career. that is where your controversy is, Rich. Yeah, that was real controversy. In this, in this, in this situation, I think it's a matter of sometimes it's good to pull a guy who obviously doesn't have it, and if you have a guy on the bench that you know you can trust, who shows a different skill set to the defense that they didn't practice for, it can add, it can it can give you a, a little bit of an advantage. No, I feel and I don't. When you're <laughs> when you're playing against a game a team like Boise State who game plans like nobody else because Chris Peterson taught them well, uh, you know, and he left some good guys still running the place, they, you, you, need, you need every little advantage you can get. I know they're not ranked this year and they're not as great as they once were, but they can still game plan like nobody's business. I'm going to fight the two of you over this. When you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. We've seen that repeatedly. I don't care if this is college rich. You can't just throw out, your, your one example of Mark Brunel and Billy Joe Hobart, which I know you're thinking about right now. That was, <laughs> that was, how long was it? Was it 25 years ago? 28 years ago? Nobody cares about what happened way back then. They only care about what happens now. And right now, you had an insane pirate as a head coach, Mike Leach, win, I suspect, in despite himself. I, 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 uh, Luke Falk threw six touchdowns today. He could have done that last week. And I heard there might have been a head injury. There might have been a concussion. If that's so, then why the heck was Luke Falk standing on the sidelines throughout that entire fourth quarter and through the overtime? He should have been on the field. I don't get it. I don't get Wazoo. I don't get it. Why do you need to get it? Here, here's the thing. This is the best... That was the Wazoo and the UW uh, rivalry has been since the early 90s. It's good for the league. It's good for the Huskies, which you should really care about, because they actually have someone to be a rival with. Normally, you go over, you beat up on Washington State four years out of five, and on the fifth year, they upset you with some heroics, and then you rinse and repeat. And the last, you know, since Mike Leach showed up on the scene, this is the this is the the first time since they uh, since uh, Mike Price left that they've had a real coach who can really rile things up in Seattle and make there to, to be some rivalry. Who cares how they do it? And by the way, there's no quarterback controversy. Luke Falk is a starter. End of story. Insane. Absolutely. Positively insane that Mike well, Leach and his pirate. Something can be two things at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about Mike Leach not running the ball. Since Abe had a bee in his bonnet, Abe's old school. He wants Mike Leach to line up in the triple I, three deep in the backfield, two tight ends, and run the ball at people. What, what's going on? Why, why do you care how they move the ball? 
look, I'm not saying line up in the wishbone and do a triple option. I'm just, okay. I'm just saying you have running backs that can actually run. They are talented. And I'm looking at a team that this week decides not to use them at all. I saw them last week against Boise State. Boise State only had three guys rushing. Run a draw play. Come on, you guys did it last year to great success, and they're not doing it again this year. And I don't know, just from a straight-up competition standpoint, I, I don't like it. I, I, you're not using the tools that are available to you. Uh, Abraham, I'm going to have to address your attention to their record uh last i checked they were three and oh so obviously what they're doing is working i'm um, sorry they're, they're not getting the style points that you want them to get but hey the three w's three games uh you know hey it works that's all i'm saying well they could be winning better matt okay <laughs> better <laughs> faster i have a question for you uh, the boise state game accepted um could this be a case of Mike Leach and his offense keeping the playbook closed until we get into league play? No, that like, is Boise, not, no, Boise State's no, a Pac, think, Boise State's a Pac-12 level player, and oh, like, no, 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 I, I accepting that game. I'm talking about like the Montana and who was it they played? Oh yeah, Oregon State. So yes, um, they, they didn't need to pull out all the. They, they didn't, didn't need to go deep. Yeah. Oregon State's a terrible, terrible, horrible team. No, I. Um, I with all due respect to the the glorious, you know, uh, the glorious and talented uh, Matt Page and the what? and the and the learned and scholarly Richard Michelson, what did we see yesterday from the University of Washington Huskies? We saw a lateral pass, some razzle dazzle, you know, uh, uh, from Browning to. Pettis and Pettis threw a 36 yard pass against the lowly Fresno State Bulldogs. And that's, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm not expecting anything amazing, but I am expecting them to work on the things that could help them out against the USC's of the world, the Stanford's, the Oregon's, and UW. And I don't see any of it. Well, one, one, one argument is it's, it's a, it's a differentiation of, of styles. It's a, um, Different way of doing things. Some teams like to keep the playback playbook closed, so they have stuff that that's in their back pocket that the defenses can't practice for. And some teams like to throw everything out there, so then that's more stuff that they need that the defenses need to worry about. So Chris Peterson likes to make everyone worry, and he likes to over game plan and all that stuff. Maybe Leach is deciding to keep the book closed a little bit, keep a little mystery going. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of have to agree that that's that's a possibility. It's something up for him. Also, USC is there um, next week. They Washington State plays uh, uh, University of Nevada Reno uh, against the Wolfpack, and then um, they host USC. And you, you've got to think that Mike Leach is licking his chops as a coach, especially after watching what Texas did to USC. We'll get into that next uh, in just a, in a minute or two. But uh, my thought is. That he has, he is, he is going to open up that playbook at home against USC at Riser Stadium. That you know that that's going to be the biggest game on the schedule for them, at least until they play the Huskies. But um, anyway, that's my two cents. Last thoughts on uh, on Washington State, Matt? It's Martin Stadium, not Riser oh, Stadium. Sorry. sorry, it's not the I'm Potato prepared. Salad Bowl. That's in Oregon State. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's what Martin I call it. Stadium. Martin Stadium in the Palouse. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think I think he's saving a little something that's special for USC. Uh, I was there, I think, probably the last time they ever beat uh, USC at home uh, back in the day when Carson Palmer was on his Heisman Trophy season. Uh, and and we, uh, we won. Uh, Wazoo won in triple overtime. It was an amazing game. But they just haven't put up a fight against USC since. And uh, I think this is the year that they really uh, send USC packing. Hey, what are your thoughts Husker, on Washington State? Uh, not Huskies, but the uh, Cougars are going to be home against USC. That's going to gonna help out. If I were a Cougar fan, I'd say I'd like it a little bit better. 
if it were at the end of the season in the snow and the cold. Um, but I think the Nevada game is a uh, a tune-up for that USC game. Uh, and I think we need to see what they do next week. I don't think Oregon State is all that great. So, I mean, I'm putting Nevada Reno above them. And uh, we'll, we'll see how they compete against them before we make any judge before I make any judgments about what they're going to do against USC. <laughs> uh, yeah. One other thing to note, just for our viewers out there, uh, the Washington state uh, versus USC game uh, is on a Friday, the 29th uh, in a couple weeks, it's on an ESPN. So it's, uh, it's nationally televised and it's going to be an awkward schedule for, uh, for the Trojans on top of having to go to the middle of nowhere to play football. Um, all right. So moving on, let's talk about USC versus Texas. This is actually a game I got to watch a ton of because it was on uh, the national broadcast. I was on an airplane. I had limited viewing options. This was a really, really good game. This was a tight game. This was not what I was expecting. Honestly, I was watching pregame and they were talking and, and all the, the analysts are going. And one of them said, ah, he's, USC is going to put 50 on him. And I'm like, yep, sounds about right. And then I don't know who those guys wearing white shirts and burnt orange were, but uh, Matt, what were your thoughts on that game? I think it showed that USC is human because Texas still sucks. And I don't know how they played up. They really played up. They deserve a lot of credit for how they hung in there in that game. But they are not anywhere on the level of talent that USC has on that roster. And it showed that USC is human and with a real team, with a real de depth, they can be taken down. I think, you know, a, a, a Husky team could absolutely beat them. They, they definitely looked human. I wrote right down here in my notes, Matt, that it was good to see that USC is fallible. And I agree with you. It'll be, it, it, it warms my heart. I really wish they lost, by the way. Um, but it warms my heart to see that they do have cracks in that armor um i could foresee like you said u-dub i could for i could foresee u-dub no longer having to go into this game or well, if they'd have to go into the championship game to play them yeah it would be the championship game but the, i feel like there's opportunity there's opportunity for u-dub for wazoo oregon stanford plus stanford law starting but um i mean there's there's opportunities for anybody there in the pac-12 and we saw it because that texas team is not good and look at the pass defense. Okay, I, I saw a stat here where Colin Johnson, actually he's a really good receiver, had seven catches for 191 yards. That pass defense is not good at USC. There is a chance, and that's all you need is a chance to get past them. Okay, so just, just a point like or, or, or a thought. I know that USC beat the Huskies at home last year in probably one of the top three games in the league last year. You know what I think it was? Just, I mean, it's, it happens to even the best teams. They had a bad game, and uh, Texas came out and punched them in the mouth. Like, over and over and over again. They were, more, they were the more physical team. They were the team that wanted it more. They were the team that was not scared. It was USC that looked tentative and scared. And they could not push... Uh, the 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 Texas defense off the line of scrimmage at the point of attack ever like uh, USC tried uh, I don't know probably eight different running plays to try to get the running backs going like distinctly different um, uh, types of running plays from sweeps to off tackle traps counter etc nothing worked nothing worked and uh, USC for whatever reason couldn't throw the ball over the top to loosen up the defense either so basically it just became a defensive slugfest. Um, Anyway, I, I don't, I, Abe, I, I got to disagree with you. The Huskies are the favorite in the league. They hold the title. USC did beat them on their worst night of the game of the year. And until Sam Darnold can show me that he's as good as uh, Jake Browning, even though Browning's gone against inferior competition at this point, um, the Huskies have way more than just a chance if so they make it to the Pac-12 So you subscribe to the Ric Flair. Motto. Um, I'm not quite that old, Abe. You're going to have to help me out here. 
Okay, John Cena. Uh, no, anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to the next game. Uh, Stanford, San Diego State. Yay! Abe, what are your thoughts here? <laughs> Stanford, the Cardinal. Uh, e- earlier, I was telling you. Earlier, I was telling you, Philip Lindsay's amazing. I had forgotten about Bryce Love, and Bryce Love just knocked in 184 yards against these uh, San Diego State Aztecs, and that what that tells me is that Keller Christ is not good. If you get 184 yards from your running back, and he had previously ran for 160 and 180, and they're losing games, and he is, uh, sorry, Matt, but he might be better than Royce Freeman. I mean, th- th- this is the best running back I have seen. I'd give him the Heisman right now, and you can't win against San Diego State, um, fighting Aztecs. Sorry. You, you got a broken system, and I'm going to put it right on, on Chris. I'm going to put it on the quarterback of that Stanford Cardinal team. I agree with you on Chris. Uh, I disagree, and I agree with you that uh, he's got uh, running back his love. He's got some talent. He is amazing. He's not Royce Freeman, though. I'm sorry. No, no just no. Number one, Royce Freeman. Sorry, it, it's, it's it's a done deal. But uh, no, they definitely they 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 need some work. They they've uh, they've they've shown that. Maybe this was uh you know was this USC. Were they still, you know, beaten up from the USC game and they just kind of lackadaisically, you know, didn't really, you know, apply themselves? Uh, I don't know. But the bottom line is, is what, what, what we're not talking about is the San Diego State Aztecs are actually pretty damn good. Uh, they they won. Uh, Who they went? They beat. Oh, they shut out uh, Arizona State. They shut them out. But they they uh, destroyed Arizona State the week before. They've shown they clearly have some serious talent on that roster. And uh, I'm 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 excited for him. I mean, you know, good good going, guys. You know that you you, you stepped up and you uh, you beat what was a ranked team at the time. I don't think they are anymore as of today. So I, I have a question for you about Stanford, the state of Stanford. Is this is this Stanford team the the one that Harbaugh built, the one that put you in a phone book and beat the crap out of you with? three tight ends and running the ball down your throat with Toby Gerhardt. Is that team gone? Is it just over? Or or like I, what I'm, where I'm, where is that team? I'm confused by this metaphor. They put you in a phone booth and beat you? Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a that, new one for me too. It's it's one. it's one I picked up from the national broadcast. So obviously you haven't been watching enough uh, Stanford football, but that's all right. <laughs> anyway, but the, Wait, the you just called me old and you're telling me that we're we're putting teams through a phone booth. Yep. Where are the phone booths? The analogy, the analogy is that Where basically are these phone booths. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, Jerry. I, I don't know, man. I I I don't think it's completely over for the Stanford Cardinals. The Stanford Cardinals have one recruiting element that no other team in the nation has. I mean, maybe. Maybe your Notre Dames can get away with this, but the Stanford Cardinal can say, you're the smartest person in the country and you're a very good athlete. You better come here. We're not well, gonna we're not gonna ask you again. Or or how about, hey, you come play for us and it doesn't matter if you blow out your knee and ruin your career on junior year, you're still gonna graduate with a degree from Stanford University. Right. You'll be <laughs> you'll be an executive at some major tech company. Yeah. It won't be. Fun. I mean, you know, if Andrew Luck never comes, never plays another game in the NFL, he's got a degree in architecture from Stanford. He's going to do well. Right. Yeah. That, that is true. They do have that, like, that is like the biggest trump card that they have. Just a reminder for those that uh, don't remember, but before Harbaugh got there, they, I think, were 1 and 11. The season before and two and ten the season before that, they were dreadful. They, no, you they still, had no, really right. fallen off of you know where they were. You know, usually the the worst they ever were were like middle of the middle of the the, the conference. So, um, I, I no, Rich, I agree with you. I mean, talent, uh, talent aside, and talent is the most important thing in college football. Um, head coaches matter immensely because they're. They are who gather the talent, but when you have an awful head coach, and I don't think Stanford has an awful head coach, 
But when you have an awful head coach like one Ty Willingham at the University of Washington, and you have 10 <laughs> players that made it to the NFL, you can submarine that program in a hurry. Yeah, that's true. All right, moving on. Tennessee, Florida. Okay, I'm, I'm going to lead this off. I'll let you guys have commentary, but this was a horrible game to watch. Horrible. Tense, tight, entertaining if you have a rooting interest, maybe, but uh, as a neutral observer and uh, stuck watching the CBS broadcast because it was the only thing that I could get for a while, I hated watching this game. What did you fellas think? This was SEC football. What are you talking about? This is the greatest football in the country. Right. This is the only the only games that matter <laughs> against two traditional SEC powerhouses, and we need to love them. And we need to get excited when C like the CBS announcers do when there's a four yard rush because oh my god that player broke away, and <laughs> yeah, it's really boring. Yeah, Rich. I Rich, these are the 14 greatest defenses against the 14 greatest offenses. And that's why you don't see any scoring. And if you don't get it, then you don't get football. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, you know, you know what happened to me? I fell asleep. I was like, yeah. I was like, gosh, I need to watch something else. And CBS, like, they, they don't scroll any, any lines of other football games. So it's true. I'm like, no. It's true. Something else well, they, be on. Maybe. They used to have Vern Lundquist on there when he was going senile, and that was at least mildly entertaining. But <laughs> not anymore. So now it's really boring. I miss oh, that, oh. I miss that Hail Mary because I was looking for anything. Give me Beekman's World. Give me freaking three two one contact. I'll watch that over freaking <laughs> SEC football any day of the week. <laughs> I'll say this that you know, you can say what you will about SECs having uh, excellent defenses. They put the most NFL players in the NFL. They're great recruiting. But other than Nick Saban, no one in that conference can consistently put together a functional offense that can last more than two or three years. And you can't say that about any of the other four, uh, you know, power five conferences. All of them at least have balance. All of them at least can play offense. All of them at least have some teams that can play defense. It's uh, it's it's like watching single wing football from the 1930s. You know, three yards in a cloud of dust. SEC, step up your game. Get some recruit some quarterbacks. Recruit some running backs. Get some good wide receivers. Your your fans deserve more, um, especially given the, the the passion that you guys have. All right. Eastern Washington University versus Fordham. Um, Abe, you are the alumni. Yeah. Tell us about this game. Yeah, okay. So we're obviously getting to the end of the show, So, but we're still going to cover Eastern Washington University because you know what? I went there, and we're going to cover it. We'll make it quick, though. Um, so Gage Cooper, the quarterback of the team, had five touchdowns and almost 400 yards passing. This is against Fordham. Fordham, by the way, has the most wins since 2012 at that FCS level. Uh, still Division One football. They have a winning history. Eastern also has a winning history and took it to them and took them out up there in the Bronx. This is great to see because Eastern had just come off of a game against Texas Tech where they got destroyed by David Klingler and his Red Raiders. They had just come off of losing uh, – not not – a good game at all versus the North Dakota State Bison, you know, and it, it, it was looking like maybe Coach Aaron Best might have uh, not been able to live up to his predecessors and Bo Baldwin and it's you know etc. Um, but he came back, he rallied this team, and took it to those Rams. I like it as an alum. I love it, and I know that uh, we've got a little team outing scheduled. Coming up here pretty soon to go see Eastern. Um, check us out. We're going to have some great articles. We're going to have a interview with Gage Cabrera, the quarterback. Interview with Coach Aaron Best. Put up on SeattleSportsUnion.com. Don't undervalue that level of football. FCS is a lot of fun. I enjoy it. So um, that's that's good. Do you have any thoughts on Eastern or or Fordham at all, uh, uh, Matt? Oh, no, I, uh, 
Abe covered it all pretty much. I uh, just, I, yeah, wanted to emphasize it's always a great time there at the Division Two, uh, the, the Inferno there in, uh, at Eastern. It's still Division and One, Matt. It's FCS. What's that? It's FCS Division, Division Two. Division Sorry. One. FCS, FBS, whatever. Maybe a okay. better question for you, Matt, is... Go Eagles. Be, a better question for you, Matt, is losing, losing Cooper Cup uh, and then getting blown out by Texas Tech and uh, uh, North Dakota State. I, I get the kind of feeling, Matt, do you, that that was a one-trick pony last year for Eastern? That he meant everything, and once he's gone, it's no surprise. Uh, I don't think so. I think I think that I think the program can can move on. I mean, it wasn't. He, yeah, he's amazing. He is absolutely amazing. I'm still pissed the Seahawks didn't draft him, and they're gonna, and the Rams are going to use him against us. But uh, you, you know, I, I think I think the foundation is there for a really good program. It's going to continue on to do well. And uh, we played two incredibly tough teams. Uh, one of them, obviously, Division One, and 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 the best Division Two programs are FCS, FBS, whatever. Uh, best Division Two, I'm going to say it, yeah, Division Two program in the country at at North Dakota State. Uh, you know, I I, no I, I no think they're going to shake it off. And no forward. shame in losing to those teams is what you're saying. No, not really. No, I, I don't. I don't see any shame at all. I mean, they were number still number like number twelve in the country right now. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up something that's a, a little bone of mine to pick. Uh, this is not on the the show notes or the schedule, but Wait. Fordham University, Eastern. I, I'm the host. You shut up. You shut up. You listen. You answer the questions. I'm the host. Wow. <laughs> okay. Fordham University had excellent uniforms. Eastern's uniforms also top notch. But I'll tell you whose uniforms sucked this week. Absolutely suck. And no, Matt, it's not your Oregon Ducks. <laughs> I, I was going to say they were awesome, but okay. No, no, I was going to say they actually they were pretty good. No, the University of Utah Utes. Okay, guys, if you, athletic director, uh, unlikely as it is, you're listening. Seriously, you got good uniforms. Stick with them. Not the crap you rolled out there on Saturday. It was horrible. Okay, here's the rule. If I turn on the television to watch your school, I should be able to tell who the crap is on the field within 20 seconds. I think we've lost control of this show. Oh, Rich, <laughs> of course you have. I'm the host. <laughs> anyway. I agree. I'm looking at their jerseys right now. I had to pull this up. I don't know what you're talking about, Rich, uh, until take, I look at it. Look at the, take a look at any shot of the Utah game from, from, yeah. uh, from yesterday. They're dreadful. It looks like the Cincinnati Bengals. Sort of, but or maybe but Auburn. Realize this is a this is a school Stripes, that the colors yeah. are red. Yeah, red. Yeah, not orange. Red. Right. Yeah. By the way, Whatever. full disclosure to our audience out there: Rich is a BYU sympathizer, so I'm not very surprised by this at all. This is not the worst uniform I've ever seen. This is not Maryland. Okay. Um, oh God. Th yeah. This oh, is <laughs> worst. This is worst not uniform ever. This is not good. But I wouldn't say it's, you know. Uh, okay. Here, here, here is my my thought, guys. Oh. Do, do you or do you not agree? NFL. One of the greatest things about the NFL is you, I turn on the game. I don't even have to look at the ticker of who's playing. I can see immediately just glancing at the helmets and the uniforms that they have. Who is playing? Isn't that isn't that one of the best things about the NFL? Is the branding? You can tell immediately who's playing. I'm I turn on the USC to Texas game. I could tell immediately which team was which just by glancing at it. I'm Whereas some of these teams run out uniforms this point. other than the Ducks, who I assume I, I expect crazy from. I'm afraid to give I'm a wrong prepared. answer. I feel like you're going to keep going on this rant. If, 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 <laughs> if you're talking about the NFL and the only good thing you can mention is the branding, that tells me where you think the NFL is. Yeah, <laughs> that is probably where I think the NFL is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I do like to know who the teams are on the field, but I, I hate to break it to you. This is not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, Michigan going out there with their all gold uniforms two weeks ago, that was a travesty of justice. This is just, this is just not good. I'd forgotten about that. That was a pretty bad, that, that was, was pretty a disaster. And I was, so I was at GameWorks with a bunch of Michigan fans and they were, uh, yes, cause PAX was 
in that week. Don't ask me why I was a game worse. Anyway, um, a bunch of Michigan fans were were railing on it, and I asked them about it, and they hate it. Absolutely, not surprising. It. Not surprising. I was going to say Michigan has one of the best uniform sets, at least their traditional uniforms. I think are don't mess like, with it. There are yeah. some teams you just don't mess with it. Like Penn State, don't ever change it. Nebraska, don't ever change it. You know, uh, Michigan, don't ever change it. Wisconsin, you know, some of these these cornerstone, you know, Alabama, don't ever change it. It, it is what it is. Um, but uh, I, we are getting poked by our technical director at the moment. Uh, I think we're running a little long. We'll, we'll move, move things along. Okay, last thing, standing. <laughs> I don't even know why this is a topic. The standings, I mean, okay, there's a bunch of 3-0 and o teams. With there's non-conference play. four 3-0 and o teams in the Pac-12 North. Yeah, so it's Two are in Washington. Play. One is in California. <laughs> there's and out. one is in Oregon. <laughs> One's in Colorado. And one in California is California, not Stanford. Wait, there's two in, two in Washington. One. Anyway, yeah. uh, no, I, uh, the standings, I mean, like, it's good to see some power teams in the Pac-12. Uh, Matt has told me for years, and I agree with him, well, you need teams in the Pac-12 to win uh, against out-of-conference foes because that will look better once your favorite team runs up against them and has to play them and win, hopefully. Um, it, it, it does not do this conference well when teams like UCLA just throw up all over themselves in Memphis. It does not do much or against Memphis, it does not do this conference well when Stanford loses to San Diego State, no matter how much Matt likes that idea. I just like the fact that San Diego State won. I, I thought it was pretty awesome. But anyway, uh, I agree. Yeah, it it, uh, it helps your your schedule strength, uh, which does get weighed in, in a bit. Uh, when you're when you're trying to make the playoffs or the BCS back in the day, it didn't help when when UW went 0 for 12 and, you know, the Ducks are get a win over them. And it's like, well, that doesn't really matter because they went 0 for 12. You know, you want you want your you want your rivals on some level. You want your rivals to do well as uh, do as well, not as well, but, you know, reasonably well you want them to win every game except the one that you play them so then that way your win matters yeah and it makes the rivalry more fun absolutely absolutely um so abe thinks that the this game against colorado is the the toughest game coming up for the huskies matt you disagree uh any thoughts on washington state uh they play the wolf pack uh this next week uh, unless Colin Kaepernick goes back as an alumni to help out their <laughs> their, uh, their program, because uh, I know he's unemployed right now. Uh, yeah, I don't think they'll have much trouble. Uh, Wazoo shouldn't have much trouble, but I would do wish they would work on their running game. They might need it against those USC Trojans. All right. Um, any last college football thoughts, uh, Matt or Abe, before uh, we sign off? Go Ducks. Go Huskies. <laughs> And Eastern? We're back. Go oh, Eastern, okay. Well, um, with that, I'm uh, thanking Matt and Abe uh, for the contributions to uh, this uh, evening's uh, review. I am Rich Michelson, signing off on behalf of Seattle Sports Union. Uh, join us every Sunday night for both college football and professional, Seahawks, uh, professional football as uh, focusing on the Seattle Seahawks. With that, uh, good night and good luck. Have a good night.